Steph Curry just updated his all-time starting five, and this new magical team has no magic in it. Best five-man NBA roster. Current? All time. Of all time. Shaq at okay. the center, Tim Duncan at the power four, Braun at the three, MJ at the two, me at the one. It's tough to argue with. That's yeah. a squad. But should we even be having this debate considering the exploits of Magic Johnson? I mean, there are people who consider it blasphemy. And I love Curry. And we all know he's a wonderful shooter, but he is not Magic Johnson. Sorry. Never, he's not in the same discussion. That is blasphemy to put him in Magic Johnson's category. Magic Johnson? Magic Johnson, you could argue, is a top three, four player in the history of the National Basketball Association. But even a diehard Lakers fan feels we should be having the conversation, and he feels like there's a legit candidate who is not getting the respect he deserves. I mean, he's the babyface assassin. He gets nothing but love from everybody else. What is he missing? What, do you, what is he missing that you feel he deserves? He may be the greatest point guard of all time. And Magic Johnson is my guy. Magic Johnson is your guy. I said Magic he, I said he may be. Yeah, even Snoop knows that Curry got that dog in him. But is he the goat of point guards? Well, the point guard debate ends today, as we'll be taking an honest look at what Magic and Steph brought to the game and their impact. But first, what made these guys so good? After Curry's exploit at the Olympics, it was clear that we would have to reopen the point guard debate. And that's why Gilbert Arenas asked Curry directly. And of course, the chef cooked. And the debate got so loud that Michael Jordan himself had to join in. Although greatest of anything is always a debate, I beg to differ on greatest point guard of all time with what you said. Magic Johnson is easily the best point guard of all time. Steph Curry is very close, but not in front of Magic. You must define point guard to really have a serious debate. Steph Curry is by far the best shooter, of all time, yes, his movement has created many shots for his teammates. He's a career 43% three-point shooter. But Magic Johnson invented the triple-double. Not true invented, but makes it more noticeable in terms of the impact on the game. It's a point guard stat, to be honest. Magic was the best. We can go on, but I don't want to take up too much of your time. I know you get the point. By the way, Magic has five NBA championships. Wow. That quote this morning Bob? at 5.45 was from Mr. Michael Jeffrey Jordan. Wow, how about that? But is that really how we define the greatest at anything? The main job of a point guard is to provide assists, and John Stockton is miles ahead of Magic Johnson. But besides Wilt Chamberlain, no one really wants to have that debate. At the end of the day, it's really about impact and influence just as much as rings and stats. But what makes these players so good? For Magic, he didn't just run the Lakers show, he was the show. Reading defenses like a psychic, making plays that turn the floor into a chessboard. Flip the coin and you've got Curry redefining range, making defenders guard him from the logo, and pulling the whole defense toward him like he's got his own gravity. In his time, Magic helped to save the league in terms of views. And now, Curry has changed the game in terms of how it's played. Magic has racked up five rings and three MVPs in a high-flying era of big men and tough defense. Curry, four championships, two MVPs, one of which was unanimous in a fast-paced era. Magic's 6'9 frame meant he could bully smaller defenders while dishing no-look passes over their heads. But then again, Ops had to guard Steph all the way from the parking lot. And trust that we've been reading the comments. At Tebow Pug said it best, there's no doubt, this is Curry's generation. Magic had his generation. They are both goats. But whose unique play style was more effective? In his days, Magic's court vision was pure wizardry. It felt like he could see plays before they even happened. His passes had pinpoint precision. And when it comes to the fast break, it was just pure magic. One other thing, running a fast break, it's not even discussable. There's nobody, and I watched it since 1960s, nobody, ran a fast break in the NBA at that position better than him. All this to say that Magic Johnson was probably the best facilitator the game has ever seen. But there's something people easily forget about Magic Johnson, and Arenas said it best. When, when it comes to Magic, you're, you're talking about a guy who is a one of one, right? It's not a traditional person. Mm -hmm. um, 
So you're, you're trying to put a guy, you're trying to, it's like Joker. You're trying to put a guy who's just a basketball player in this position to, 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 to identify with it, mm -hmm. right? M Magic was a small fort shooting guard coming into the NBA. His first four years, he was the shooting guard. Norm Nixon was the point guard, right? When they moved Norm, they gave the ball to Magic because it was better played by a guy at that size, right? So he was your small forward who guarded the small forward but had the ball in his hand. Mm -hmm. And because he did what he did, like Joker does, they called him the point guard, mm -hmm. right? That's where point forward comes in from. Thank you. So if we want to use, and I always did this to people, just with him. If you're going to use Magic as the best point, I'm going to use LeBron. Exactly. Now LeBron's the number one point guard. Yeah. Then you can be like, oh, LeBron ain't the point guard. Well, he led his team in assists every f***ing year. Every year, absolutely. It, you know, so he has to be the best point guard of all time. Yeah. Right? So if you're going to play with Magic, because LeBron was 2.0 of Magic Johnson. Mm -hmm. Coming into the NBA, he was Magic Johnson with Jordan-like yeah. jumping ability. Absolutely. Yeah. That was the frame. So you can't now take him out of it yeah. because he's then surpassed all of these stats, right? So if you're going to try to use Magic as the point guard, then you have to throw LeBron as the best point guard ever, but you're not going to do that. Now, Steph was a different beast. His off-ball movement was impeccable. Defenders had to stick to him like glue because the second they slack, he's letting it fly. Curry's gravity pulls defenders out, opens lanes, and creates space everywhere. Even when he's not shooting, he's still orchestrating, just with force instead of finesse. But does all that qualify as facilitating the game? Well, Stephen A thinks so. When you talk the true definition of what a point guard is, which is a facilitator, facilitating the abilities for others around you to score. What I'm thinking about is the modern day game and the word impact. And I'm thinking about Steph Curry's extraordinary marksmanship and his movement without the basketball and how it forces a defense to have their head on a swivel and as a result, it facilitates others like Klay Thompson and, and Jordan Poole when he was there to do what Worthy, Byron Scott, and others were able to do statistically for the Los Angeles Lakers while Magic Johnson was a point guard. As far as a point guard is a facilitator, the fact is both Steph and Magic do that, just in different ways. At Che underscore Dryadic had a great explanation. Magic facilitates by running the ball in the court with his vision, his passing, and intangibles, while Curry facilitates by drawing multiple defenders with gravity using off-ball movement and his shooting threat. And at the Apple White 2088 simplified it more, saying, Steph Curry may be the best shooting point guard ever, but Magic is the best floor general point guard. Now that we've resolved that, how about the impact on the teammates they are facilitating? The Lakers' Showtime squad wasn't just Magic's playground. It was his symphony, and he had the players to hit every note right. Indeed, Magic was spoiled for choice, running with Kareem, Worthy, Rambus, and Cooper, some of the greatest basketball minds and skill sets of the 80s. When it comes to Magic, this is the only problem I have when, when we're talking about the greatest, right? Where's the factor in that he came into a dynasty? Right? The team went to the Western Conference Final two years straight. Two years straight, which means this is a good team. They add him, win a championship. Right? His legacy is already above everyone because he already got put onto a dynasty team. Mm -hmm. Right? Out of his first 10 years, he went to the finals eight times, won five championships. Right? In that same time frame, he was the number one pick, won a championship. The reason they didn't win it the second time because he was hurt. He comes back healthy, championship. Right? Then they lost, and then they get James Worthy, the number one pick. The team was so good, James Worthy didn't even start the first year. Mm. Right? He didn't even, the number, the number one, one pick, pick. <laughs> didn't even start. That's how good this team was. Mm -hmm. Right? So you, you're, you're inherited this greatness. So what about Curry? Well, he walked into a team that was ranked 13th in the Western Conference. It took years before the team was good enough to actually compete for a championship. But eventually, he got his own arsenal in Clay, Draymond, and KD, two of which are no longer with him as they compete for the championship yet again. 
Regardless, we can't deny that Magic's passing elevated his teammates into legendary contributors, making him a crucial piece in the Showtime dynasty. But the same can be said for Curry, whose play style opened lanes for teammates like Klay Thompson and Draymond Green. And one can even argue that he had to shoot excessively when you consider the fact that he wasn't always surrounded by stars he could pass to. But even if Curry had to build a dynasty himself, what about the opponents? Did he face the caliber of rivals that Magic faced? Magic was up against Bird Celtic, Detroit's bad boys, and even Jordan's bulls as they rose to power. Those guys didn't just compete, they wanted to break each other. But how about Curry? Well, he had LeBron's Heat and Cavs, Kobe's Lakers, Durant's Thunder, and even the young guns of the league like Jokic, Doncic, and Giannis. Every night was a test against future Hall of Famers. Yes, the eras were different, but each of these guys impacted the game in ways that we can observe. As for Magic, he not only survived, but thrived in a physical league, especially against Detroit's bad boys, where finesse met brute strength. He had the best rookie game in the history of the league in the 1980 NBA Finals game against the 76ers, where he recorded 42 points, 15 rebounds, and 7 assists. As Jordan said, he practically invented the triple-double stat, and to do that in such a physical league is nothing but magic. But Curry has had to face up to LeBron's dominance in ways that are quite unexpected. I mean, for a 6'3 player to do what he did in the Olympics? Recently, he surpassed Michael Jordan to become the all-time leader in points per minute. And who could forget performances like his historic 50-point Game 7 against Sacramento? So if we're going to ask who's the GOAT of point guards, what we should define isn't the point guard position, but greatness? Because when it comes to facilitating the game, there is more than one way to do that. But there isn't more than one way to be great. It's all about impact, and taking a team like the Warriors to four championships while also being clutch for your country at the international stage is all kinds of greatness. But then again, Magic has five rings, and here's what he thinks. That's Steph Curry talking about who the greatest point guard ever is, and I mean, when you see something like that, does that, what, what kind of emotions do you experience? I, I, listen, I love Steph Curry and his family, so. Mm -hmm. I think he's right to be on any conversation that of the best you. of. Yeah. Uh -huh. But, you know, we all know who's one and who's two. And <laughs> no, I, I'm not, you know, no, I'm just saying. He said it right. He's, he's got a while, you know, a little while longer. So does a while longer mean another ring before he becomes the GOAT? What do you think? Let us know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, then you should watch this next one too.